You out there guys, this is Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft and this is a video review of Midlands Airsoft War Games, also known as The Moor. Now I need to point out this is a first impression video review, I'd never been to the site before on the day that I turned up so everything I'm going to talk about is based on my experiences of that day and that day only. And with that in mind we'll dive right on into it. The site's located in Aspenby near Melton Mowbray and it's quite an interesting one to find if you've never been before. Uh, the postcode to the site is in the description down below if you want to find it yourself. And for me, it dropped me off on the village on the opposite side of where the site is. There's like a bridge in between the site and the village where it drops you. You have to go underneath that bridge and you'll see a large gate on your left. Go through the gate, take a first left, up the hill and then park wherever you can. Because that is where the site entrance is. So, walk on fee for the day was £16.50 if you have your own kit and £38.50 if you need a higher kit. The hire includes a AEG, face mask and 3,000 rounds worth of ammo. No overalls though, so just mind you bring your own clothes that you don't mind getting ditched. On the subject of that, I think that's a really competitive price for a walk on fee. I was quite surprised. Um, you have to book in advance beforehand and I was kind of expecting to pay a bit more on the day when we got there, but they never asked and there's nothing on their website or Facebook to suggest otherwise, so winner, proper competitive price. Um, lunch is not included as part of that walk on fee though. It's like three or four quid extra depending on what you go for, but even then that's still pretty cheap for a decent day's airsoft in. Um, the safe zone itself is decent but small, especially for the numbers that they were drawing in. Um, I've spoke to the guys there and they're planning on expanding it, which you could see sort of in action at the time. So um, they are making it bigger, but as it stands, there's not that much in the area that's actually covered. So if you get a little bit of weather, uh, you have to turn up early in order to snag the good spaces. Most people seem content to set up out of the back of their cars, though, from what I could tell. Uh, tea and coffee was available throughout the day. Uh, they did have a shop on site selling gas, BBs, that sort of thing. Uh, no AEGs or anything fancy like that, they're just a small supply shop. Um, there were bathrooms on site in the form of two portaloos. Use them if you dare. Uh, I'm not a particular fan of those sort of things, but it's better than nothing. Uh, on top of that as well, next to the safe zone, they were doing chrono tests through the day. Now, chrono for the site is 350 for AEGs, 400 for locked to semi DMRs, 500 for bolt action snipers. Uh, with the chrono as well, they were giving out the little tags to put on the guns, but also they were using their own 0.2 gram ammo in everybody's gun, so you'd have to put their ammo in before doing the chrono test, so extra points for thoroughness there. But as a player, just be aware of this, so when you go up to there, don't go with a full mag that's all wound up and everything, because you'll have to ditch most of it into your pocket or something. So just take an empty mag up for the chrono test, and they'll put their 0.2 grams in it. So the staff on site were pretty decent people, uh, the safety brief was delivered quickly to the point, nothing missed, and I've got no complaints about how the games run either. Um, only one minor improvement I think we could state is um, that the gates open at 8.15 but game on was called two hours later, and there was a lot of time where we just sat around twiddling our thumbs for that point, so maybe try and shorten that down, you might be able to fit another game in the day, but just a minor thing. Um, as for the players, um, I didn't really get talking to that many of them unfortunately just because of the way the safe zone is laid out and most people are setting up in their cars and stuff, it's not indicative to getting talking to people but the ones that I did do were proper decent people, uh, had a good conversation with, uh, there's a good atmosphere on site definitely so no complaints with that. Um, hit taking, hit taking was okay, like, it's, it's good, it's average, it's what you'd expect from an airsoft site. Um, there was maybe one or two I'm thinking yeah but um, the site itself is very dense with a lot of bracken and low hanging branches and everything so it's very hard to tell exactly where your BBs are striking because it's highly likely that like a twig of destiny will just deflect it at the last second or something. So I don't particularly want to say either way if it was excellent or not like that. There was one or two that I was a little bit thinking about but um, for the most part it was really good so decent hit taking I'd say. So onto the site terrain then, and indeed the best aspect about this site. The moor is a bit of a mashup between fighting in built-up areas and virgin woodland. Uh, most of the woodland seems quite untouched, there's a couple of barricades here and there, but for the most part it's really quite surprisingly dense, even in springtime, so I can only imagine how thick it's going to be once summer actually comes along. But the real appeal of this site is the amount of buildings that are on offer. And I honestly can't tell if this used to be like a train depot or an old army base or something, but you've got plenty of structures all over the place. You've got like some huge hangars dug into the side of the cliff faces. You've got a, a genuine village filled with m more than half a dozen decently sized buildings with like a raised walkway between them. That's quite fun to fight through. You've even got a tunnel section that connects the village, goes through the hillside and pops out in what can they call the marketplace, which is quite a large open area with some car wrecks and wooden barricades to hide behind. So the terrain on offer is wide, varied and interesting. The, the site's raw acreage itself is huge as well, so there's definitely room to move about and do your own thing. 
Um, the site ebbs and flows all over the place. It's quite hilly in places as well, so the train can be a little bit challenging at times, but it's just such an interesting thing. You're more than willing to forgive it. Uh, there's one area that's close to the safe zone that's quite barren, however, it's just basically flat concrete. Um, I think for potential future development of the site, you should chuck in some tyre walls or wooden barricades or something. But that's really negligible as it stands because the rest of the site is so big, you never need to use the thing anyway. And there's just so much there that it really doesn't detract from the overall experience. So definitely want to see just for the raw looks of the site alone. So onto the game types then. Uh, the first two were very simple, take the hill ones, um, defenders were on one lives, attackers had unlimited, and it was just whichever team took the hill the fastest was the winner. Just a very simple, very basic game that got people going, and the fact that attackers are literally pushing up a very steep hill face made it interesting in its own right. Uh, the next one was a fallback game, uh, because we'd lost the uh, original hill one, we were defending on that one. And uh, it played out really well, actually, um, because the terrain was so varied, there were plenty of hiding spots all over the place so you could set up. Even though there were loads of people on your team, everybody had their own little place. Uh, there was, it wasn't like you were crammed into one area or something. You had room to spread out and defend it, so it worked really well. Um, going back from that, though, um, I found it quite surprising they didn't turn it around. Like, uh, that's not necessarily a good or bad thing. It's just not what I'm used to. Like, a lot of sites tend to just flip games whichever way, so the fact that we just did it as one and then moved on to the next one was a bit surprising. Not necessarily good or bad, just surprising. Um, fighting in the village itself though was just really good fun because of that. You've just got so many places. The village itself is so large that you've actually got room to fall back if your first kind of defensive bit had fallen but you still had your life. So that really extended it out. The defenders could really hold their own in that one. Uh, the next two games were capture the flags, uh, team started on both ends of the village with a flag in the middle, you had to rush in, get it back to your base, but you couldn't really run with the flag, you had to walk with it. Now the first one of these was great for me because I managed to get the high ground and was just dropping rounds in on players off the top of the village, so definitely using the surrounding hillside to your advantage is a very real thing when fighting in the village, so that definitely makes it interesting. It's not just building to building, the bits around them can be used as well, so definitely plus points with that. Um, I didn't make it into the second game, unfortunately, though, because I completely ran out of ammo. Um, one thing they tried to do throughout the day was avoid going back to the safe zone as much as possible. Now, if I'd have known this at the start of the day, I could have brought some extra ammo with me, but as it was, I was having to scrounge rounds for me, mate, just to get into that first flag game, let alone the second one. So uh, just be prepared for that when you turn up. Bring ammo with you into the game zones, because they don't like to go back to the safe zone that often. So unfortunately don't quite know how the second flag game went off, but I assume it's just like the same as the first, which played really well. Uh, the next game was a really extended long one. Uh, it was fought over the entirety of the site, and there were objectives to be found, uh, capturable spawn points with like a cone and a stick. Took the stick out, flip it to your team's colour, put it back in, you then own that respawn point, and so it allows the teams to move around the place. Uh, there was a traitor on each team as well, who could just do as much damage as possible before going over to the other team. And if the team didn't find out who they were by the end of the game, they lost. Um, I thought that was a little bit of a harsh condition to have because it's, um, if the traitor doesn't get discovered, their entire team loses, then they don't have much of an incentive to reveal themselves. Um, as it was, the other team got more objectives than we did, so they should have won. But because their traitor didn't do anything, they then lost, which I think was a bit of a tug the rug out from under him sort of moment. So perhaps not make that a win condition, like... Just give them incentive to go nuts on the team before switching over. Um, as I say, played across the entire site, which was brilliant. And even though it's such a large place, there was always something to do. There were objectives everywhere. So regardless of where you were on the map, there was always a target to be aimed at. So you're contributing to the team effort regardless of where you were. So definitely played out really well that game. Uh, one other thing about the objectives, though. Uh, perhaps make them a bit more obvious and less heavy. Um, because the one we found was uh, this giant welding cylinder and uh, we were lugging it back to base and uh, one of our guys came along and said, oh no, no guys, no, you don't need that one, we've already got it, but we didn't have to bring it back to base, the marshals told us it was too heavy to carry back, so we just left it there. And we are just like, okay, but if you left it there, then we found it and wanted to bring it back as well, like if it is out of the game, remove it from the game. Um, but yeah, perhaps... Um, make them a bit more obvious as well because as well as the welding cylinder there's propane tanks all through the village as well so we're thinking is that an objective is that an objective so uh, cover them in tape or something just make it very obvious and a bit more lightweight and then maybe you can lug it back to base but minor points uh, the game itself works really well besides that uh, the last one was an infection game type and I very much got the impression that this is a well we've got an hour to kill and not many ideas so what should we do um, 
it didn't go off perfectly. Uh, the first five minutes, the infected guys were coming at us and we were holding them back quite well because they started in an area with very minimal cover. So they just wandered off to the other side of the site to attack our other guys. And so for the next ten minutes, we just sat there twiddling our thumbs thinking, where have they gone? But um, it can work. I think uh, in order to do that, it's probably best to start them in the village where they've got plenty of cover to go into. And against the sheer amount of people they were against, have more initial infected to get it going. Um, but on top of that as well, if you've got like an hour to kill at the end of the day, perhaps have just a couple of reserve game ideas just to flip out, just if you have time to finish. But the games themselves play well beyond that. So ultimately then, do I recommend a visit to Midlands Airsoft War Games? Absolutely, hell yes, I had such a good time at this place. It's top-notch sites, absolutely. The terrain itself uh, just makes it such a place to visit. Like I'm going to put it on top of the pedestal with the jail in terms of a place that is just so unique that you need to see it just because of that. Uh, the fact that you can play well through the terrain as well and it just works as a site is a bonus on top of that. It's just such an individual place that should be on everybody's radar because of that. Um, it's not flawless. Um, it's not exactly the most professional and clean place in the world, but I think that adds to the charm a little bit. Uh, the safe zone is small as it is, but they are expanding it. Um, they need to fill in that bit just next to the safe zone with a bit more terrain, but the fact that they've got such a large site to play with, that's not really necessary at all. Uh, maybe make the objectives a bit lighter, more identifiable. That's such a negligible point and so easily fixed. We don't really need to mention it. So, yeah, I had a great time at this site. I'm definitely going to be recommending it to people that I visit and speak to. So if you've never been to the mall before, get yourself down there. You're going to have a great time and I can absolutely guarantee you of that. Now, I really hope you enjoyed my video review of the mall. If you've got any questions you'd like to ask me, feedback you want to give, maybe you want to share your own experiences of the site, leave it in the comments section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, this has been Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft.